Well, good evening. I'd like to welcome you to this longest night service. I'm glad we're here, and I'm glad we're together. I also want to welcome those who are here with us on Zoom. Fred, Doreen, and Kathy, welcome. We're so glad you're with us tonight. For those on Zoom, if you um, would like to have a candle nearby to light at some point during the service, I'd invite you to um, grab a candle in your home, and we will also be celebrating communion later. So if you can have your communion elements ready, um, those of you who are Zooming with us, that would be great. Tonight is the longest night of the year, which is to say the least amount of daylight. It is the winter solstice, the longest night. Our ancestors, long before modern technology, were so observant of the periods of daylight and darkness. And they noticed centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries ago that beginning in the fall, they noticed a perceptible shortness of the day. And they also were observant enough to know that this was the shortest daylight time of the year. For Christians, longest night is an opportunity to reflect on the fact that not all is jolly and bright, not all is tinsel and glitter, that there's also in each of us some sense of loneliness, injury, pain, grieving, losses that we've experienced. And we also know that God's light can only be seen because of darkness. Christians have always used images of darkness and light. It's a part of who we are. And tonight we are gathered. We're gathered together in spirit and in love. And an opportunity to release that which we've been holding. To acknowledge that darkness. And to be reminded once more that God is light. So welcome.
Join me in our coming together. Tonight we are gathered daring to wonder if God has indeed come in Jesus. Tonight we gather with neighbors and strangers, a family made one by our brokenness and oneness. Tonight we gather just as we are. Just a reminder, during our hymn singing tonight, we're going to remain seated. We light our first candle remembering that the light shines in the darkness and that it cannot be overcome. We all light our second candle, a reminder of the peace we seek, both inner peace and the peace we desire throughout the world. We light our third candle, recalling that many nights we have been anxious and worried, and yet knowing that joy will come again. Fourth candle, place our trust in the love that will never let us go. Would you join with me in our centering prayer? Holy God of Advent, you became weak so we could find strength in moments of heartbreak. You wandered in the wilderness, holding our hands when we felt lost and hopeless. 
You set aside your needs to hold our pain so we might be healed, even when there seems to be no hope. You became one of us so we could never be alone in any moment, in any circumstance. So come now, child of Bethlehem, to strengthen us these days. May we feel your presence in a way we have never known, not just as one born in a stable long ago and far away, but as one born in our hearts, in our hopes, in our spirits, in our weakness. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, whose light shines in the darkness. Amen. Our reading is from Luke chapter 14, verses 15 to 24. One of the dinner guests said to Jesus, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time of the, for the dinner, he sent a slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going there for I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported that this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. This story offers hope for those who have no one to invite them. It reminds us that in God's divine order, no one is excluded. All are invited, all are included, all are welcome. If you have been feeling excluded, if you need to claim and affirm the truth that God's love includes you, we invite you to come forward and light one of the candles. Let us pray. Lord, our God, may your fellowship be known by all, including those who feel excluded. Amen.
This reading is from the sixth chapter of Luke, verses 17 through 23. Jesus came down and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. This passage reveals that Jesus was well aware of people's sorrows, yearnings, and suffering, and that he offered a promise of something different. So if you have been suffering from a loss, if you have been sorrowing, yearning, grieving, you are welcome to claim the hope of Jesus' promise by coming forward and lighting a candle. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, bring some warmth and light to those who mourn, who hunger and thirst, and who weep. Amen.
The final reading is Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and through 29. Jesus said, Come to me, all you are that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. When burdens get piled on top of other burdens, the load can crush us. In his promise, Jesus says that there is another way to carry our burdens, by being yoked in labor with him. If you feel burdened, needing someone to carry on with you, please come forward and light a candle. Let us pray. Jesus, the light of the world, Jesus, our brother and friend, we don't ask you to shoulder our burdens for us, just that you help us carry them so that we may carry on. Amen. Well, it is Jesus who invites us to this table. It is his invitation.
This is a very appropriate moment for communion. Very appropriate that we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Because when we think about it, Jesus faced brokenness, betrayal, hatred. Must have felt lonely, sometimes abandoned. In other words, he felt the things we feel. He became one of us. He understands our brokenness, our pain, our loneliness. And so we remember him for that. And for what God did through him. We remember that on the night of his desertion and betrayal, Jesus was with his disciples and he took bread. And he gave God thanks. He broke the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and again gave God thanks and said to his disciples, this cup is the covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul reminds us that every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we tell of the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Almighty God, your unstoppable love we have found in Jesus Christ. And so we thank you for these elements, this ordinary bread, this ordinary cup. And we thank you that Jesus is with us in our darkness, in our brokenness, in our incompleteness. And that your love, God, holds us because you consider us precious. And so we thank you for these gifts of cup and bread and for love that knows no end. And we pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have your communion kit with you, and for those who are at home, if you would, have your elements close by. This is Christ's body. Broken for us. Take and eat. This is the cup of blessing that we share in Christ Jesus. Take and drink. At this time, I'd like to 
invite you, if you are able, to come forward and light a candle. Light a candle if you are dealing with an issue we have not named. Or light a candle as an act of prayer for someone else. Or light a candle to offer thanks. Light a candle for whatever reason you have. And for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, you're invited to light your candle as well, as we are all joined together in the spirit of love. Would you join with me in our prayer? Holy God, whose creation includes darkness and light, be with us in each one of our situations. Live among us, live with us, and in us. Fill the distances that divide and separate us. Reconcile us with you and with one another. Open our hearts to the mystery of your love, in the imitation of your grace, let our complacency give way to conversion. Let our judgments give way to compassionate acceptance of others. Turn oppression to justice and transform conflict to peace. You who are the light of the world, be light in our darkness. Amen.
Thanks for being here tonight, and you're welcome to sit and reflect and take your time. Um, may God bless you.